Today, let's run through a simulation of investigating a fileless attack using Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection and Exploit Protection built into Windows 10. I think you're going to love this. Okay, so to set up this simulation, this will be a PowerShell script that I'm going to run that's going to inject shell code into notepad.exe process, which will then try to contact a command and control server. And we call this a live off the land type of attack. Now, one of my demos here is going to have exploit protection enabled, and you're going to see how that's actually going to stop the attack before it even starts. And if you want to learn more about exploit protection, go to this URL that's on the slide. Here's some of the mitigations that exploit protection uh, enforces, and we're going to enable a few of these in the demo. The first demo is going to be without exploit protection. So let's check it out. Okay, so I have my PowerShell script that I'm gonna run, and we're going to go ahead and kick this thing off. Now again, uh, this could be kicked off from a social engineering campaign, a phishing email, maybe remotely, I mean, many different ways. And that PowerShell script is going to inject shell code into the notepad process here. And that's exactly what's happened. So this is just letting you know that that's been done. And so while that is working, we're gonna switch over here to our Defender ATP console and we're gonna pull up our incidents. And here is our incident. Now remember an incident is combining multiple alerts and the system has automatically correlated those alerts. So here it found two alerts that were triggered by this and it automatically created an incident and added those alerts. So here's our two alerts, suspicious process, inject and observed and uh, unexpected behavior. So let's start with the first one and let's open up that alert page. And here is where I could see this alert. I'll zoom in here just one notch for you so you can see this better. And uh, when I check out the alert here, I can see the category and technique. So this is using a process injection technique. Now what I love about Defender ATP is uh, we integrate with the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And so I can go out here and I can learn more about this specific type of uh, attack technique. Uh, we detected this using our uh, AMZ technology, anti-malware. Uh, behavioral and memory, and right now it's detected as opposed to uh, automatically resolved or, or mitigated. And so when I hover over this, you can see that uh, we are still investigating it, and you can see up here in the corner an automatic investigation is running. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Here's which machine it was on. And as I scroll through this uh, in the alert process tree, this is where I can see a little bit about the specific event. So it looks like PowerShell was executed with elevated permissions. So that's a little bit of a red flag. And I could see a script was ran. And when I click on that script, it will show me exactly what that script is. And uh, that's pretty interesting. And I, from there, I can download the script. I can even copy it out and go take a closer look at. It. Now, again, AMZ stands for Anti-Malware Scan Interface, and it's a... Uh, it's a capability Microsoft has, you can actually build into your products. And so some of these things like PowerShell actually have that built in. Now, when I go back to our incident and we look at one of these other alerts, like this unexpected behavior observed by a process, this is interesting because remember I told you this is going to try to connect to a command and control server, a C2 server? Well, check it out, this is what we're doing. So now the technique is a little different. It's masquerading and process hallowing and um, when I scroll through this, here I can see what's happening. And I can see that uh, we are trying to call an IP address and connect with it. And this could be my command and control server. Now, this is all simulation, so of course it's coming from Microsoft or it's trying to go to Microsoft, but this could be your C2 server. So then from there you can go in the firewall and uh, you know disable connections to that IP address, so on and so forth. All right, so now let's go back to our incident and let's check out the progress of the investigation. So it looks like the investigation is still running. And if we open up the investigation page, from here, I can see what the investigation is doing. So if I click on log, uh, this is currently checking different components on the machine. And uh, where we're at right now is we're looking at the, a list of running processes. And uh, again, I can, click on the little bubble next to these and I can see details of what that looks like. So here uh, we've gotten a list of all active connections that we've queried that machine for. So here's all of the active connections on that machine. 
So you get the idea. It's pretty interesting. I can see everything that's happening. Uh, so we'll let that cook for a few moments. Let me show you one that's already ran and automatically got mitigated. So here's an incident I've already resolved. So let's go ahead and pull that guy up. And uh, this is one that's already been mitigated automatically. So same alerts that we saw before, but if I go to investigation, here we can see status is remediated. And when we dig into that investigation, you will notice that the log has 55 entries. So eventually the other one will show 55 when it gets done processing. This took 11 minutes to process and it's going through and it's doing its homework. It's asking itself questions and it's gathering all sorts of data. So for example, here I looked at all the processes that are running on that machine. Uh, and here is the query and the results of that. And I can view the, the full thing if I need to. Um, you get the idea. Now, if I go to evidence, here I can see that the threat was remediated, so the process was terminated. And when I click on this, I can view a little bit more information about that. So that is the demo of a fileless attack and investigating and remediating it. Now let's take a look at what this same type of attack would look like, but with exploit protection enabled. Okay, so this time we're going to run a PowerShell script that's gonna enable exploit protection. Now I've already ran this, and this PowerShell script basically turned on exploit protection. So if you come in here to the Windows Security Center in Windows 10, and we go to App and Browser Control, and we go to Exploit Protection Settings, Program Settings, we added an entry for Notepad. There's Notepad. Notice we have five system overrides. And as we scroll through these overrides, we've enabled things like EAF and IAF and some other items. So that's what that PowerShell script did. So now exploit protection is enabled. So we're going to run this PowerShell script again. Now notice it's gonna launch Notepad, but it's gonna immediately kill it because exploit protection kicked in and uh, prevented this from happening. There it goes. So uh, it, it effectively mitigated the attack. So now if we come into the Defender Security Center here and do a quick refresh, there's our incident. And if we open up the incident, here we could see three alerts. And uh, notice that uh, these alerts show as resolved and then two of them are new. And then we have this guy, EAF violation has occurred. Remember I showed you how we enabled EAF? Well, this is letting you know that it's occurred. So if we come in here and we look at one of these alerts, again, just like before, we could see some information about it. Um, but look, automated investigation is not applicable. Why? Because exploit protection kicked in before Defender ATP ever had a chance to kick in. It was that fast. And again, I can come in here and I can go to investigations and check out the status of the investigation. No threats found because it never had a chance because of exploit protection. And if we come in here and we look at this, I can look at the log and I can see everything that the investigation tried to do. So it tried to pull data from this machine. And so I could click on one of these items and it'll tell me exactly uh, what it was doing, right? There you go. And uh, when I click on evidence, you can see, in just a moment here, you can see that no threats were found. And uh, that's the ultimate status. And so at this point, uh, this incident will automatically be resolved. Now, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Manage Incident, and we're just going to go ahead and resolve this just to speed things along here. And we're gonna tell it that this was security testing. So there you have it, folks. That is a fileless simulated attack. Okay, if you want to try this yourself, spin up a virtual machine or use the evaluation lab in the Defender ATP product, run through this simulation by clicking on the question mark, and you can actually have access to the documentation and the PowerShell script. I hope you found value in this video. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.